Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his monthly bill? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? There's no way that can be right! Hello, and welcome to James the Lesser Express Lane, where we get you in and out as fast as possible. I want to start off with decade of Game of the Year picks. Let's see, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's 11 years. Not 10. I get a DSP. I was taught in school that a decade's 11 years. Just like, I was taught rainy day fun is money you spend when it rains. You're an idiot. We all know that. So I'm going to be doing 2012 to 2021. Game of the year picks. Now, someone will be like, oh, that wasn't the game of the year this was. If I didn't play that game, then I can't use it as my game of the year because I didn't play it. And there's one or two picks maybe that match with his. Sorry, but for the most part, he just picked the most normie crap. And a lot of the stuff was picked as the VGA Game Awards Game of the Years, even though he just spent multiple streams crying and complaining. The Game Awards don't mean anything. They don't mean anything. By the way, my list includes all their picks. Except for maybe Sonic Mania. I love the I think. What do you mean, you think? Was it a good game or not? Was it your game of the year or not? There is no, uh, I think this was a good game. No. You're making your list and you have to add a, I think? God, what an idiot. Anyways, here we go with number 10 with Kings of Amular Reckoning from 2012. This is a fantastic RPG with a great storyline. Learning the skills in different ways is also cool and building your team is fun. It's a bit lengthy. You can easily put 100 hours into this game with several DLCs to get and now it has been remastered and 100% worth getting. You can get the remastered, get the full game with better graphics, a little bit better detail here and there, and all the DLCs combined. What are you waiting for? Get it! Fantastic game. My game of 2012. And while well, this game was better, that game was better. Like I said, if I didn't play those games, I can't compare them to what I played, so... For me, 2012, Kings of Amular, Reckoning. I know, I know, for 2013, choosing The Last of Us, eh. But, until the sequel came out, this was considered a great game. And the sequel came out and kind of tainted everyone's opinion about it. But for me, it is still a great game. The mechanics, story, visuals, all were really damn good, especially for a PS3. And I loved playing it, I was so ready for the sequel. Until, you know, they made the sequel and, oh, God, what a tragedy that was. But ignoring the sequel, that was just, again, really bad. When I first played this game, I was like, okay, good story, good mechanics. I mean, the building mechanics and uh, sometimes you do the execution attacks. I thought it was really cool. And I liked sneaking around, getting around the enemies, attacking from behind. Like, it was just a good game. Now, again, as always, are the games out there? Better, maybe, but if I didn't play them, can't say if they were better or not, because I didn't play them. A lot of people are going to say, wait, you picked this game? I have to admit, 2014, I didn't play a lot of games from then. Other ones that I did, Wolfenstein New Order was probably the best. But I love Wolfenstein anyway, so hey, why not make this first person shooter over the timeline my pick? I really think it is the alternate timeline that made me like it, because... Much like with the Resistance, it's like, okay, different history, different story. I kind of like that. Mechanics were same as every other first person. I mean, it's a first person shooter. You've played one, you've played majority of them. Well, this one has a slide mechanic. Well, this one has, I, 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 I don't care. Again, 2014 was a bit of a drought year for me for playing games. So if you have your own, go ahead, tell me down below, guys. This year... The year of 2015 is such a hard one to pick because I love Bloodborne. I got Platinum in it. Yes, I know the first video, well, streaming me playing it, I broke down, cried, hated it. But once I actually learned the mechanics again and was able to actually, you know, play through it, shit, this game is so good. But Soma is amazing. The story is fantastic, and if you don't want to play it, find a playthrough of someone you like and enjoy the story. The story is really good. I just like the part of, like, being on the edge of your seat, 
heart pumping. Oh God, please don't see me, please don't see me, please don't see me. Ah, get around, get around, ah! But Bloodborne is Bloodborne. Fantastic game. So, you gotta do the coin flip, and I gotta say, Soma beats Bloodborne for game of the year, 2015. Sorry, Bloodborne. I do love you. You're a fantastic game. For this year, I could get it. Gotta give it to Soma. And again, if you haven't played it, find someone who has and watch them. The story is just that good. But if you actually play it, then you'll get the on the edge of your seat, heart pumping feeling. Just saying. Dark Souls 3. Was it the best of the Dark Souls? Nah, I think I gotta give that to Dark Souls 1. But it was way better than two. And this is probably another reason why I gave the nod to Soma over Bloodborne because I was going to have Dark Souls games on here anyways. Didn't want to have too many. Dark Souls games are great, even if super hurt at times. Once you learn the style, enemy timing, so forth, it does feel easier, but you'll still die. A lot. That's the point of the game, is that you go, you die. You go, you die. You go, and this time you don't die at that point. Because you've learned the movement patterns, like, all right, wait for this guy to walk past that door, then I can go through, attack that guy behind him. By the time he realizes I'm there, the other guy's already dead, so I can kill him. Bam, done. Finally got through that room. Just to die in the next room. Just saying. Kind of sucks that you will die a lot. Well, that's just the way it is in Dark Souls. Also, I'm a little biased because I do love the Dark Souls style games, whether it's Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Mortal Shell, Code Vein. Like, those style of games I just really enjoy. So, for this year anyways, I gotta give the nod to Dark Souls 3. The best game of 2016 that I played. Again, never forget, these are the games that I played. Oh, man. I still remember, this was back when I said with Second Shift, I get home from work. Almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Sit down. Get on Hellblade. And play through it completely. Fantastic game for 2017. Of course, another game came out called Divinity 2 that year. But, I didn't play Divinity 2 that year. So, I'm giving the nod to the Hellblade. Hellblade takes, eh, 7-ish hours, depending on how good or bad you are, to get through it. It has a lot of God of War style, I guess you'd call it. Maybe a little bit of Dark Souls in it. One of my fantastic favorite details they put in this game is that the character is suffering from PTSD and hallucinations. So they got people who suffer from hallucinations to come in and describe the hallucinations. So it's not just, oh, well, we saw on TV this is what they claim hallucinations are. Like, no, they got people who actually had them to come in and describe them and help them, like, figure this stuff out. Those kind of details make a game like this even better. And you know what? They got a sequel coming out soon. And by soon I mean a year or two, but still, they got a sequel coming out. So check this game out. In 2018, Dark Souls Remastered came out. The best of the Dark Souls made better? Yes, please. Frame rate issues removed, for the most part. A slight upgrade in visuals and a few other tweaks help make a great game even better. A little cheating here going with the remaster versus the original, but the original didn't come out during this past decade, so. Gotta go with this, just saying. You will die a lot, just like in Dark Souls 3. But in the remastered version, this is an area where nearly unplayable on the original version because of the frame rate. This version, they fixed it, for the most part. Just saying. <laughs> God, I love the Dark Souls style games. Dang, first of the Nintendo games to make it onto my list. As you can see, 2019, Fire Emblem, Three Houses. I was almost tempted to go with Days Gone, but I played Days Gone years, well, like two years after it actually came out. It came out on PlayStation Plus for free. I already had so many Sony exclusive games, like, know it. We're gonna go over to Three Houses from Nintendo. Another thing that made me decide this over Days Gone is if I won the lottery and never had to work again, which game would I sit down and play through again from the very beginning? Days Gone, Three Houses. 
gotta say, three houses win that. Choose a different house, choose different choices, go through it again. Yeah. I don't know that DSP hated it. Hmm. Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go with this, because we've got another choice to do, which is Hades on PC and Switch originally. Finally moved over to the other consoles. But Hades hand down is for 2020. I like the Final Fantasy VII Remake, but Hades is just so fantastic. The style, the game mechanics. And the fact that... Oh, I'm trying to think of a way to explain it. Like, when you die, it's like, alright, that sucks, you gotta start over. But now you're gonna start over better. You go through. Maybe you make it past that part again. Or maybe you don't. Hades is a real bitch to beat. And it's like, yay, you finally made your escape. Oh, what? What? You die? Right back to the very beginning? <sighs> yeah, you gotta go through and beat it, like, multiple times. Do all this other side stuff. So not only is it a good game, but you can play it for hours and hours and hours. And then some more hours. Which, I mean, when you love a game, you want to play more of it. Because this is the game for you. 2021 was probably the easiest one to choose because the only other game I played that came out in 2021 was Life is Strange 2 Colors. Which, I do enjoy the Life is Strange games, but for entertainment, overall replay value, Diablo 2 Resurrected. I've played Diablo 2 every year since it came out. It was in 2001. I know you say like 1998, but I think that was when I was playing Diablo 1. I got confused there. Sorry. But now, it's Resurrected. So my friend was willing to go out and get it. And we can play together again. And it's not just a few visual upgrades. They've also made it that, unlike in the original where, oh, you can use the Roger Cube to upgrade your runes to a certain point. Now in multiplayer, you can upgrade them all the way to Zod. Which is not very feasible because someone did the math. You would need over a trillion L runes to upgrade to a Zod. It's like, holy shit! That's a lot of runes. Obviously, you also get Eld and Tear and Tal and Ral and Or and Thaw and all the other ones that drop, but using exclusively L runes. It would take over a trillion of them to make one Zod room. Hmm. Ah, but it's like, go my friends. I was like, man, did you think in 2021 we would be playing Diablo 2, discussing strategies, discussing where to go for the best drops? Oh, well, with this character, you want to go there because it's easier for that character. You can kill faster. The name of the game is kill as fast as possible. Well, this guy has a 0.01% better chance of dropping that item. Yes, but if it takes me 10 minutes to beat him, well, I can beat 10 of these guys in 5 minutes. It's better to go with the 10 guys and kill in 5 minutes versus the guy you can kill in 10 minutes. Just saying. God, this game is so fantastic. I love it. In fact, once it's done being edited and uploaded, I'll probably play some more. Anyways, for you guys, what are your game of the years for the past decade? What would it be your nominated but didn't win? God, there's so many games out there that I've played. But they weren't like, you know, oh yeah, I played Arkham Asylum. Yeah, I played Fallout 3. Yeah, I played Until Dawn. And maybe I love those games. Maybe I really, really love those games. But for that year, were they the game of the year? Probably not. Like, uh, honorable mentions would have been like Prey, uh, Code Vein. Eh. I don't know about Code Vein. Code Vein was a good game, but I don't think it'd make it on honorable mentions. Prey, definitely, though. And let's see, after Prey, I'd probably go with... Um, I play so many fucking games, trying to remember them all. Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 2 was fantastic. I don't know. Did that come back in the past decade? Pretty sure it did. God, there's just so many games to play and so many games to love. Try to keep track of them all, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you for watching. As always, like, subscribe. Comment down below and have one hell of a day.